welcome back to the Justinian Deception and our latest research. And thanks for all the comments on the Australia video. That's going stronger than any other video we've ever made. And we've also just found that New South Wales is actually Lord Howe Island under Section 4 of the New South Wales Constant, uh, Constitution Act 1902. Uh, it says it includes Lord Howe Island, so that excludes what we think is New South Wales. We'll do a separate video on that, but that's just a quick one for now, so you know New South Wales is an island. Uh, the latest research, guys, I want to get back to the grammar stuff. This is the Oxford Concise Dictionary of Linguistics. You can buy it online. It's about 36 bucks Australian once it's delivered. So what we found in this book, and it really is damning, this will be close to one of the last videos I think we'll be doing on this sort of thing. I want to talk to you about Hocus Pocus find it on page 176. Hocus Pocus, I was wondering what a, I thought it was just a kid's word that was made up, but it's in, it's in this dictionary. Coined by Fred W. Householder in 1952 in reference to linguists who did not ascribe any reality to the units, categories, etc. that they established as a, opposed to God's truth linguists who did. So what does that mean? So what they're talking about units and categories they can't talk about words and sentences because what they're not using isn't a word or a sentence it doesn't have a lexical or a grammatical meaning so this is the all capitals when you put the all capitals in the lex the lexicon of that has no meaning so therefore the grammar of the sentence has no meaning so this is what hocus pocus is this is what they're using in the court documents uh, your driver's license this is you know the devil's language your hocus pocus and look what it's opposed to is uh, God's truth. So I'll talk to you about God's truth. Let's see what that says. So that was uh, once again coined by Fred W. Householder in 1952. There we go. In reference to linguists who believe they were establishing units, categories, etc. with real existence in a language as opposed to hocus pocus linguists who did not. So in God's truth, we are getting meaning of the symbols that we use. The words have meaning. They are words because they have meaning. The sentences have grammar. The words have lexicon. So this is your, your dog Latin mixed with English or whatever it is they're doing. This is your English, uh, your proper st um, standard language. Uh, this is your non-standard language. We spoke about these in the other video. So your non-standard language uh, has no styles manual and no institution backing it up. God's truth, so English would be God's truth. That has an English styles manual. We've shown you those, and we'll show you them again. And they're institutionally endorsed by various high-ranking academic institutions. So I wanted to talk to you two guys about something called suzerainty. Now, this is almost the opposite of sovereignty. This is when a company runs a country as opposed to a sovereign running a country. What happens is all the internals, so let's take uh, Australia for example, even though it's the water, it's operating under piracy on the land, let's forget that for a moment. But let's just look at our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, so he's running under suzerainty, so he gets to decide on issues that are happening within the state itself. The, the not so important stuff, you know, that he's going to go to Hawaii to fight the fires, that he's going to... <laughs> do whatever he does with our internal economic, how much tax you're going to pay while you're here. Our big monetary politi policies under suzerainty are run by treaty. What an Australian is, is in the International Civil Aviation Organisation Treaty. So who you are comes from an aviation treaty. Now, what that has to do with, you know, an aviation treaty is about landing a 747 in Sydney. So what that has to do with you being an Australian is... Uh, well, that's anybody's guess, but they put it in these places to hide it from you so you'll never find it. And they can say, well, that's tough luck, you know, you didn't know the law, ignorance is no excuse. So we're operating under suzerainty. The primary power is the US Federal Reserve operating the suzerainty and the company, the Australia company, because it's not a country, it's not a nation, it's a private company, and we can prove that in a moment, is operating the little stuff here. They're mowing the lawns. The US Federal Reserve taking the coal and the gas and the oil and the petrol and the money. Guys, Hocus Pocus is the, the mixture of the all capitals and the English. Uh, that is an anti language. If they use this anti language against you and you don't have a, you have done what Ron and I have, you don't have your birth certificate, you have your form of information or your certificate of birth, you've got the proper document. When they use the anti language, this comes a criminal argot. That's in here as well. So, an anti-language, once again, no styles manual, no codification, 
no institutional endorsement. Another thing we found on page 43 of this, I'll show you. If you want to get a close up of that one while I find the page. We found block language. This is why we think they want you to write, please write in all block letters. <laughs> uh, where are we? Block language. A form of language, yeah. sorry, hold that the right way up, yeah. used in newspaper headlines, in cables, in notices, on labels of products, and so on. Distinguished by specific rules or patterns which have developed in part independently of those in ordinary language. Because block language is a language on its own. If you're using block language, then it doesn't have a styles manual. Now block lang language, for an example, is used in a head, he uh, headlines for newspapers. So three killed in fire. That's not a proper sentence. It doesn't have the right predicates. It's graphic. Yeah, it's also a graphic. So it doesn't make up, it doesn't meet the requirements of a sentence with the predicates, the casing, the uh, sentence clauses, the, the punctuation. It's designed to be a graphic that you can make a uh, a value judgment on reading, but it's a graphic design to get you to buy the newspaper. And it's developed in block language, page 43, concise <laughs> dictionary of linguistics. And once again, no styles manual, no institutional endorsements for occasion. Anyone can write a headline. It doesn't matter, but there's no rules to it. So these, this is your non-standard language. You can't read it. How are they using this in the court? Now I'll show you something, guys, we found. So we're going to do a little comparison here. <laughs> These are just some of the books that Rom and I have found that support A, that a proper noun has one capital letter. English is a case sensitive language. Uh, all the rest of our claims that are in here. What all capitals is. <laughs> We've got another pile here for you. This is all the evidence <laughs> to say that the government is actually correct and all these are wrong and anyone like the police, the lawyers, the politicians, Rob Sudi, all these people who are saying this, this, I want to read you this. So this is a little email and I received this yesterday. This is from uh, Nicole Azuli. Nicole and I go way back. She works at Birth, Deaths and Marriages in New South Wales. She's a complaints manager there and uh, we have had plenty of back and forth over the years. She finally sent me this email and I'm only gonna read you the first sentence. Good afternoon. There is no manual in relation to certificates. There is no manual in relation <laughs> to the certificates. Guys, that means this is no style manual, codification, no institutional endorsement. That means your birth certificate cannot be read. You cannot read it. There is no way you can understand that. Now, every what the courts are doing, these uh, arbitral tribunals, is your entire legal personality comes from this birth certificate that you carry. And there is no styles manual. So the courts, therefore, have no styles manual. A few of you have put up comments about the police pulling me over and you ask them, where does your capitals come from? Nowhere. It's just made up. What happens is the registrars get together, the, the email goes on, a few of the registrars around the uh, oceanic region get together and they come up with a style. So there's about 12 people who invent a language, which is a criminal argot. It's a private language, a cipher. You know, you Lucifer. And they come up with this and then they expect us to be able to read it and this is why they need your name. If you can't give them a name and a date of birth, oh, and a good way to get out of your date of birth, guys, you, you can't remember. Uh, infantile amnesia is actually what's called in, in medical, but you would have to get them to go and speak to somebody who was actually at your birth and can verify your identity that way. So you don't have to give them a, because that would just be hearsay if you're doing it, and you are engaging then in a presumption. Do not do it. And as far as your name goes, you haven't got one. This is, this is what we're saying. They've set up an account, the ship, whatever it is they've done, there is no styles manual for it. This is just arbitrary language. It's just some pictures of some letters it's made to look like words that kind of resembles English. English is here. This is coded, we can tell you. Why, why aren't the birth certificates following any single one of these manuals? I mean, that's the Australian government's one right there. That's their own manual. And they don't think that they're gonna write a birth certificate to this, because we couldn't work it out because they've never done it and we can hold them to this. So there you go guys, it's, uh, it's Babylon, you can't read it. Uh, 
birth, deaths and marriages, the New South Wales Government have... Uh, this is a confession, right? We've given you all the evidence over the years. <laughs> we got this, we never thought we would. This is a confession. I have a matter in the ICC. It's against a number of police, a number of judges, magistrates, and this will be added to it. If you are interested, you can write to the ICC and ask for my file. It is otp-cr-371 forward slash 18 and they are still looking into the matter. Uh, the charges are slavery and forced conscription. And uh, if I have my way, there won't be many cops left in Tenerfield. <laughs> but there it is, guys. I don't know. That's in black and white. There is no manual. If there's no manual, you can't read it. It's very simple. That's, that's a presumption. And if you're, if you're running around holding a birth certificate, they've got enough of a presumption to go, you know, you can read this crap that 12 registrars or whatever came up with. If you start quizzing them on it, they, <laughs> there is nothing there. There is no government. There is no documents. This is all, it's all just smoke and mirrors. Hocus Pocus. Yep. Back to Hocus Pocus. This is the Sarah Witty style manual. The one that's used to write cartoons is used to write your birth certificate. What does that make you? A joke. That's it. All right, guys, I'll leave you with that. And uh, thanks for all the lovely comments. Keep them coming in. And if you've got any stuff to put up, please put those links to videos or whatever uh, references to law. We love reading and we check them all out and we learn a lot. And uh, even if we haven't replied, because I'm not on YouTube and Rom, you know, uh, we've got time constraints on what we do. But, yeah, we absolutely love it. So thank you. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.